All the tools used in this and all of our videos are available at the Bow Tuning Tips online store. Be sure to check them out at bowtuningtips.com. Hey everybody, this week I want to talk to you guys about replacing your fiber optic sight pin. And I know a lot of guys out there use fiber optic sights. I mean, it's like the most common thing nowadays. And um, I've just got a, a single, a three pin static sight here that doesn't move. And if you guys don't know what I'm saying about the pin, the fiber being broken, you can see this fiber here. It's supposed to be inside of the little pin, the steel pin at the top, like the other two. And it's actually been broke because something was shoved in there on accident, a stick, and it broke that fiber. Now, you can buy the entire pin itself, but there's really no point in it because, you know, it's going to cost you 30, 40 bucks, and you can get, I don't I mean, like, you can buy a foot of the fiber itself for you know fractions of what it would cost to do one, to just get one pin and you would only you know you're only going to be using a couple of inches like on this one so it only takes a limited amount of tools and takes about five minutes so let's get right into it so I can show you guys how to replace it okay I'm gonna go ahead and take my bow grip clamp out and I'm gonna put in the vice head I like to use the vice head on stuff like this because it just makes it nice having that third hand and I don't have to hold it you know Okay, what I like to do here is I like to go ahead and just break the sight housing loose. Now, if this is a sight that you're going to use, like say on your bow and you don't want to have to resight it, before you move it, you could go ahead and just put a little scratch on the bracket there, and that would allow you to be able to reference that and put it back in the exact same spot when you're going to put it back on your bow. It's going to limit your time on, on sighting it in. Okay, now the top pin's broke, as you guys can see right there. The fibers broke out. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, go ahead and do, this is just one of the little U-shaped fibers. I'm just going to go ahead and just snip it off. Actually, it broke on that side. This stuff, the fibers, the, the fiber optic itself, you can see, if I can get it, it's, it doesn't glow very good when it's in your hands. It does a little bit. You have to let the light hit it because if you cover it up, it kind of goes out. It's a day glow type of thing. You guys, um, this is the most popular type of sight pin uh, material there is. Now, okay, what I've got here is I've got a, a piece that is a really long piece. And you can see it's the same size thread diameter, which really doesn't matter. There, there's different size thread diameters, but you can change the size of this when you install it. I'm going to show you how we do that, but we're going to go ahead and do the installation, which this is so simple. You remember it was in the hole there? What I like to do with it is I'll go ahead and right on the end, I'm going to go ahead and get a little fire out. And I want to just barely touch it. You want to have to get this really close and you're going to watch it to where it does not take much heat to really get it going. I mean, I can already tell it right there. You can see, I mean, it already swelled up. You can see right there on the end, it flared out. And that's the only thing you're wanting to do is just get it to flare out. I'm going to get it right there. I mean, you get it close to that fire and see it'll burn really easy. This stuff is so delicate. It's kind of hard to work with, and when you get a long piece, you you know you have a little bit of trial and error. But the main thing is just light, light heat, and you just want enough heat to get it to start to flare. It's starting to flare a little bit, and just keep inching it in. You can see I'm like eighth of an inch away, and in the end of it's all flaring out. Okay, now I got a little fatter, but that's what I'm telling you about you choosing the diameter that you're going to use. Now. I've got that a little, I've got that swelled up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it back in here and get a close up of that. Okay, we're in here pretty tight. What you want to do is we've got that end burned. We're going to stick it through the hole where the other thread was. You want to stick the long side in. You, you're not going to be able to stick the piece that you just uh, swelled up with the, with the heat. Okay, you want to pull it through there. And this is a good tight fit. Okay, you can see we got it back in there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and thread it through the hole on this side. This stuff is tiny, and I got big old fat meat hooks anyway. That's pretty funny. And then I'm trying to do something so small. All right, I'm going to pull it through. And what you want to do is you want to match the other threads that are there. And the position, the kind of length that they are, and kind of get them in the get it in the same general bend 
like the other ones are at. You can see, let me tilt the vise forward there. I got it bent. You can see right there. It's bent right along the same shape as those other pins are. Okay. Now, we got it like that. What we're going to do is you want to pull a little bit extra through that you need. You want to kind of pull it in. And you're going to take your scissors and you're going to go ahead and you're going to snip it off. Okay. And then, now you can do this two ways. I showed you how to burn the other end by using the, the light or the lighter itself. Well, I'm going to do this time. I'm going to show you a different way. You can do this on each end. I wanted to show you both ways though. Okay, what we're going to do is you want to take the end of your scissors and take your take your heat source there, whatever it may be. You're going to just heat it up because, like I said before, it doesn't take a whole lot. Okay, just heat it up and get it kind of kind of hot. And you want to be careful. You know, kids, make sure your parents are with you. Or get your dad to do this, you know, it's probably better. Okay, that's pretty hot right there. I'm going to just take it now. I'm just going to touch it right on the end. And it boom, and you see it get fat? Look how fat it got. It flattened it out perfectly. Now, you can take it and push it back in, and it'll stay in there. Because it's actually bigger than the hole now. Okay, now, if you notice that pin looks a little bit fatter than these other pins down here. Okay, that's normal. And it's not really a big deal because it's a 20 yard pin in this case. But if you're worried about it, you can take it and you can just ever so slightly snip that thing down. And you could, I tell you what, the best thing to use on these, and I don't have a pair of them available right now, is a pair of fingernail clippers. But you can just see just by a little snip snip on each side, and I got it right back in place and it's good and solid. Okay. One other thing that I like to do on these types of pins, I'll show you a little tip. If you've got these types of pins that are kind of open on the back, what I like to do is I'll get a piece of scotch tape or clear tape of some sort. I'm, scotch is the name brand, but I'll get a little piece of tape and I'm going to tear it off. And then what I like to do with it is let me tilt this vice forward so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, I'll tilt it like that. What I like to do is I take that tape and I'm going to go around my sight pin. See I messed it up for that time. I just tried to take two. Okay. Alright, this time I take a little piece of that tape. It doesn't have to be very long. But the, but the whole point of what you're trying to do, you're going to stick it to the bottom of the sight like so and then you want to flip it over and bring it down like that and then you pinch it together. Okay, so you basically stuck the tape to itself and then right here in the front just trim it off. Roll it up. You'll have to do a little trimming to get it nice and pretty. But you get the point. What you've done is, is you've reinforced that pin by taking it and putting that piece of tape on it, which doesn't hurt the clarity of the pin. You can still see that we're going gathering plenty of light and the pin's nice and bright. So, that's all there is to it. Well, there you have it, everybody. A literally a five-minute fix and... It's not going to cost you near as much as replacing a pin to your sight. You can do that with any length sight pin there is. Some of those fibers are really long and go all the way around and go into a light source. Um, it's basically just a matter of taking the thing apart and running a new thread through the tube that's there. Really simple and I hope this tip helped you out and it'll save you some money. And If you're looking for some of that fiber optic thread, uh, be sure to go over there to BowTuningTips.com and check it out. Sell a whole bunch of different colors over there and it's uh, Real easy to get what size you need. If you, if you have any questions about it, just give me an email or give me a call. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys next time. Until then, stay tuned.